Today I'm going to do something I've never done and that is to give you an all access tour of the underground lair. Well, maybe not all access, there are some restricted areas, but I'm going to show you a lot of the underground lair which also acts as my art studio and I can pretty much guarantee you, you have never seen an art studio tour quite like this. <laughs> Greetings people of the internet, I'm Scott with Surfworks Art Labs. Welcome mad creators to the underground lair where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And I've always talked about the underground lair, I've always mentioned it, but you know, I've never given you a tour. I mean, you can see some of it in the background of these videos, uh, and some of you may be a little familiar with it, but there's a lot more to see than you could ever imagine, and I'm gonna show you that today. So, there's a lot to cover, so I think we should just go ahead and get started. Okay, so I am going to start off by showing you a lot of the stuff that you may have already seen in the background, but I'll go into a little more detail what some of this stuff is. So, as we kind of pan up here, you can see, uh, sometimes you kind of have to watch your head because of the kind of the rock formations up here that we've kind of carved the underground layer into, but uh, below that, We've got, of course, the art desk, one of the most important parts. I've got a few things on the art desk that I'll, I'll show you here. So if we go in here, let's see. So this is my little Cirque Worker Minion, Hinch Minion. Uh, that's sort of the mascot for the company. Uh, and those are the guys, the robots that help us with all the tasks that uh, we don't want to do, whether it's stuff that we can't do because it's hazardous or whatever. Uh, we've also got uh, some blueprints here. Uh, we get our blueprints uh, just so we know some of the designs we have to do. Of course, we got a little mannequin here that we can use uh, just to pose for different figure drawings and things like that. This here is my main set of Copic markers, and I think this is a 72 set. There's an A and a B set. I forgot which one this is. Uh, and I've also bought some separate Copics, and I, yeah, but I use all kinds of markers. I mix and match them, but these are, uh, I was going to say they're my favorite. I'll show you my favorite later, but these are really good markers. So, But I use these probably more than others because I have the probably the most of these colors and they're they are really good markers and that's why they're so expensive for a reason I guess um, but anyway so those are my Copics I keep them you know here at this desk and I got some other ones at my other work areas which I'll show you uh, just some color pencils uh, if I need for sketching or whatever these here are uh, some of my lab provisions I sell these on my online store this is the glowing glob this is the sticky hydropus. It sticks to walls and crawls down them. The growing brain. You add water and it will grow. So, like I said, all those are available at surfworks.com. Uh, pan down here. Just some artwork. These are some of my sketches that I'm using for the uh, Young and the Dead Kickstarter that I will be fulfilling very soon and getting those out to anyone that uh, contributed to that campaign. Uh, just a cool mech with my little circ worker hench minion in there. You see that guy piloting that. Uh, this I did for the meet the artist hashtag challenge maybe I'll link to that that's a video I did a while ago but um, but you know it's kind of informative and it's fun just talking about the stuff that's in my bag and everything like that that's big on or it was at one time big on Instagram I don't know if it's such a big thing but maybe I will link to that this here is the Vaculux, and basically you can kind of see it, it goes all the way through here, right to here. The Vaculux, of course, is our mail delivery system in the underground layer. So if we get mail, uh, this is it. Now, oh, we, got, we do have some mail. As you can see, it's kind of small. Uh, it has to be reduced down. We dehydrate the mail so we can send it through this Vaculux system, and then we bring it back to normal size. You may have seen that on a previous video. And of course, right here we have the infamous parallelescope. Kind of works like a periscope in a submarine, uh, but it doesn't just look at the surface, which we can do sometimes, but has some other unique features. It can allow us to view parallel universes, alternate realities, back and forth in time. So we can pretty much go anywhere we want to vicariously through this device. So we use that quite a bit. Over here, moving on, we've got some extra lab coats if we have a guest or whatever hard hats some areas of the underground lair we need to wear hard hats and uh right down this is kind of cute so my daughter made this this is one of my circ worker hench minions she made this out of felt and everything i just think that's so cute so i just set that right there all right so let's pan back around over here now the underground lair we've got a lot of stuff running here we need power and the way we power everything of course is with nuclear power so this is our plutonium case i like to keep that right by my desk right by my chair i guess it could be dangerous keeping that that close to me but i don't want to have it get out of sight you never know what can happen so i'm always keeping an eye on that 
All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the command center where we do all of our digital work. The command center is down below in another area of the underground layer, so we're gonna take the freight elevator down and I'll meet you there in a minute. Behind me is the command center. Now that I'm doing most of my work digitally, this is where I find myself spending the majority of my time. Uh, so I wanna show you some of the workstations, some of the gadgets and tech that I'm working with, and uh, also a few art supplies. So this is station number one. This is my primary workstation. As I said, I am pretty much here most of the time. Uh, of course, this is the Cintiq. This is, this is my baby. This is the thing that uh, I could not live without. It was probably one of the best investments I've ever made. It's a 24 inch HD Cintiq. It's a little bit of an older model. I bought it used, but Cintiqs are great. I was going to say notorious, but that's sort of a negative thing. Not notorious, but they are, they're just fantastic about holding their value and working for a long time. Unlike, you know, like an iPad or whatever that you might get three years out of if you're lucky. So, so um, anyway, so I've got a couple monitors up here. Uh, right now, I've just kind of I'm working on some uh, some enamel pins uh, based on my retrovention set. So hopefully those will be in the store pretty soon. And uh, let's see what else we got over here. If you can see back there, I got those are my chameleon markers. Got a lot of markers back there. Um, there's some in the drawers. I'll show you some of that uh, up here. Just some of the again, the Vaculux goes through here as well. Uh, just microscope if we need to do some scientific stuff over here. Let's see what do we got. Uh, this is the Elgato Stream Deck, which I haven't used yet, uh, but I do want to do some some cool stuff with streaming. Of course, I got the microphone for what I do: Hangouts, phone, uh, business cards. This right here is the, uh, the this is the primary printer that I use. Um, it's, it's, it's a decent printer, you know, um, but I, I don't use it for, I don't actually print, I usually outsource all my prints. So this is just more like an office printer, but it, it is good. It, it will print oversized. So if I'm printing blue lines for comics or something, it works great for there. Um, I don't know in here, nothing fancy, just, you know, ink cartridges, some boxes and some more paper and everything. Uh, pretty basic stuff right there. Uh, let's see what we got again. Uh, you know, some Pantone swatches, some, you know, little guides and things like that, some discs and some cords and SD cards, stuff like that. Uh, so let's move over to station number two. Uh, this right here, uh, of course, we got the tool dual screens going on over here too. Uh, I do a lot of the editing over here. Um, and uh, let's see, so right here, we've got the, uh, what is this, the Intuos Pro. Uh, and this is, a, this is a really good piece again. Wacom makes great stuff. They last pretty much forever um, or, a lo or a long time. Uh, and then, <laughs> so, but like I said, one thing that doesn't last forever. So hopefully I didn't make a mistake, but I did go ahead and I bought the Apple uh, iPad Pro and I'm hoping that it's not going to be obsolete in three or four years. So, cause uh, I spent a lot of money on that. And so far it's been driving me nuts. Uh, but maybe I'll go into that on another video. So let's see up here. Now I don't, I don't collect a lot of original artwork, but these, this is, these are, I do have a few pieces and these are friends, mostly friends of mine. So this right here is SpongeBob SquarePants, of course, done as a mad scientist. This was done by Vincent DePorter, who is the artist on a lot of the SpongeBob SquarePants. He's also a friend of mine. He's local. He lives in the same city as me. We hang out, we draw, we do all that kind of stuff, which is cool. Moving on, we of course have Kermit the Frog. Hey ho, Kermit the Frog, welcome to the underground lair, ha! And of course, the reason why we got Kermit, because I am a huge fan of Jim Henson. This right here, that is not a portrait. We've got some studio lights in here, trying to get the reflection out of there. This is not a photograph. This is actually an airbrush piece done by the amazing airbrush artist, Jay Ferguson. Uh, we did like an art trade and I definitely got the better end of that deal because I think I just did a Elvira Mistress of the Dark marker rendering and he gave me this and it is awesome and I love it and I cherish it and Jay is awesome. Uh, of course over here, this is Monkey Mod done by Kevin Cross who started the 100 Days of Making Comics. A lot of people might know me from that. Uh, that is the big challenge that I'm involved with and I've done anthologies for it and everything. But this, the, the interesting thing about this uh, Monkey Mod piece is this is one of the first uh, actual art pieces done in the new style. He, he's been doing Monkey Mod for a while, but he kind of redesigned them. And this is like one of the first ones. This is uh, 2011, I think. Um, so one of the very first uh, pieces done in that style. Of course, I, I love Star Wars. So I got some Star Wars stuff up there. Um, but I'll show you some of the other stuff, some tools and things I got. 
Because I do a lot of live streaming, I need an art space uh, that is close to my computer. So I set up this little art space here. I do have, I've got a, a video camera here. This is just a camcorder. These work a little better than DSLR when it comes to like filming like long, long format things because DSLRs usually will cut off after a certain amount of time. So I've got this guy set up. Um, and if I'm doing like a drawing and I want to, you know, do the full drawing, I want to speed it up. That's what this whole thing is for here. And then underneath, of course, I've got I've got pretty close access to some some of my drawing supplies. I've got pens and everything, uh, pencils, some you know what is that masking, some whiteouts, temp, all kinds of templates and guides and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's what's in that drawer. Here, let's see. I've got uh, a watercolor set. I need to do more watercolor. I haven't done much watercolor in a while. I've got some different dyes, some gouaches. So basically, this is my paint drawer. I also have. Um, Prisma colors and some you know, cheap color pencils, even Crayola. These are great for like doing calligraphy, these Crayola markers. So I keep some of those on hand. Um, sometimes when I'm doing lettering and everything. Uh, let's see what else, what else we got. Oh, okay, so here we go. Here's the here's some of the markers. Now uh, these are my trias. These are discontinued. They don't really make these anymore. Uh, but I use them quite a bit and I've got tons of refills and everything. Uh, then I've got some old like Doc Martin watercolor dyes. Let's see what else. Coronar, you know, all kinds of just dyes and, and markers and stuff like that. Uh, what is here? Oh, and then even more markers. So here we've got a set of Spectrum Noir. And I do a lot of marker uh, review videos and things like that. These are the hoo hoo. These are kind of the cheap ones. But I, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I use them. I probably should get some kind of setup where I, you know, a lot of people have these cool setups where they can just, they've got them all up where they can see them and everything. I kind of have to dig through them, but that's all right. Uh, but just a bunch of different brands. These are my absolute favorite, and hardly anyone talks about them, but these are the ad markers. They're not alcohol based, they are xylene based. And they, uh, they don't, they, I can't do this one-handed, but anyway, they don't they don't have like uh, either a chisel tip or a or a brush tip. It's kind of a hybrid, um, so it only needs one tip. But these are like the best markers. Uh, I love these. These are even better than Copics. Sorry, Copics, even though I love you. All right, so those are some of my markers. Now I'm prone to be a little bit of a workaholic, but you can't work 24/7. You need a little bit of R and R. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the barracks or the sleeping quarters. But uh, rest assured, there's still tons of art supplies and things in there as well. So let's go up. This is the area where I wind down, take a break, catch a few Z's, but when I wake up, it's back to work. I've got another workstation right over here. I'm gonna show you that, plus this, this cool mural back here. So along the barracks walls, I have this mural that I painted that kind of takes me back to my childhood. I, of course, am a big comic book fan. These are most of the characters depicted as they were when I was growing up, so some of them may have changed a little bit now. Um, but uh, you are probably still familiar with a lot of these characters. Uh, the, the, the mural wraps around the whole area, but I'm not gonna show you the whole thing. Uh, maybe I'll do a separate thing where I just, just show you a tour of that. But the idea behind this, of course, is that we've got, uh, we've got the Marvel characters facing off with the DC characters, because uh, I'm not partial to either one. Uh, I, I love characters from both, so I just thought it'd be cool to have sort of a battle royale. Um, so that's what we got going on here. This is my other workstation that I was talking about. This is actually where I do the bulk of my, my drawing, uh, my comic book drawing. This actually is my light table. I'll flip that on. So if I need to do any tracing or anything like that, I got my light table. And uh, this is, of course, the werewolves and unicorns uh, cover that I'm working on for the anthology. Uh, over here, uh, we've got sort of an older iPad. It really doesn't do, it doesn't work for much other than sometimes I can pull some reference up or I can watch YouTube. That's about all it will work because it's a very old, one of the like first generation, I think. Um, and then, of course, I've got all my inking supplies and some pencils and things like there. Uh, got some ellipse templates. And, and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's move over here to the closet where I keep a lot of my books and everything. Uh, of course, we got another Kermit. Like I mentioned before, I'm a huge Jim Henson fan. This one's actually a puppet, so you can kind of work that as a puppet and everything. Uh, what do I got? So I got a lot of Marvel, Disney books, uh, just art, art of movies books, uh, just tons of stuff, visual dictionaries for reference, just, you know, a lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, most of this I use just 
for whatever reference I need, or there's some comic books and some business of illustration books, all that kind of stuff. Uh, down here, I've got my paper cutter, uh, working on some uh, artist edition comics. And of course you can't make artist edition comics or mini comics without the long arm stapler. So I've got that right here. Uh, some studio lights, some packing materials for shipping orders. And that's kind of what you're gonna find mostly in this other side over here. All right, on the other side of the closet, uh, so there's the uh, Jaws shark game from back in the days. Uh, this is all, I don't even know why I keep some of this stuff. It's like, I've got software boxes for stuff I don't even use anymore. There's some sketchbooks and everything here. Uh, down here I got some circle punches, some crazy scissors, uh, stamps, test tubes. Uh, business cards down here I've got a few pops this one I this one I bought I'm not as this is I think supernatural I'm not a supernatural fan but I think I want to try to convert this put a little green lab coat on him and try to convert him into uh, to a Cirqueworks guy uh, so let's see so in here I've got these these are uh, these are actually foot, uh, or not foot, <laughs> these are actually like shoe cases, but uh, they're great for holding artwork. Um, let's see, so I've got all my, my art prints in there, so that's what I use those for. Uh, and then I've got some, you know, a bunch of tubes and things for shipping. These are my test tubes, they're kind of like mystery boxes. These are like, uh, with, like a loop crate, but they're test tubes with with my products and things those are also on the online store uh just more studio stuff over here to film with and everything all right so over the bed of course more spider-man stuff here but beneath i've got a bunch of stuff here not super exciting but we've got you know my papers more shipping stuff uh printing but over here i've got let's see uh, this is where i keep a lot of my old art I really should do something with this. I should sell it or whatever, but you know, of course, we got Shogun Warriors, Guy King, and Mazinga, or Ma Great, whatever his name is. Um, and then, uh, you know, just all kinds of artwork. I've got my comic book pages and stuff here. Uh, so that, that stuff's all in there. I gotta go through that. I'm not a huge toy collector, but I've got a few things. I've got an Iron Giant, and so this actually, I, I just, just to kind of, let you guys know uh, I saw Iron Giant when it first came out in the theaters it actually bombed in the theaters it wasn't until later that it kind of came a thing but but I saw it like opening day I got the I got the comic that came with it and everything so I am a huge huge fan of Iron Giant uh, this here is a cool find this Thor right here Mego Thor uh, I would love to collect all the Migos but the cool thing about this guy is I actually found him at a Goodwill in a in like a just a pack with a bunch of stuff and I couldn't believe it because he actually has pretty he's only missing his helmet he's got his still got his wristbands he's got the the hammer the boots everything the cape he's in you know he's a little worse for wear he's not well he's not that bad he's actually in pretty good condition seeing, seeing that I just found him like in this bag of junk and stuff but but I just um, I'm just it's amazing that I like kind of just found him for like 50 cents and everything so so that's cool because I'm a big fan of like all the old Mego stuff um, of course Spider-Man I think this guy plays yeah Spider-Man theme song um, and then just we got more books and stuff down here all right so this here oh man this is so back in the day we used to carry these giant portfolios around. This thing hasn't been updated forever, so I don't even know what's... Oh uh, yeah, so this is, a, this is a character design I did. Oh man, this has gotta be 20 years old almost, probably more. Um, <laughs> but this is a design I did for uh, this, it's this, oh here, here's a picture of it. So this was in a bar in the Honolulu airport port called Stinger Rays. Um, I came up with the character design. I didn't actually build him, but but uh, yeah, some animatronics guys built it and everything. But these are just some different character designs, and I don't know what else is in here. This is a children's show that I worked on way back in the days. That's actually, this will show you how old it is. That's a VHS cover that I designed, and the artwork's all mine. Uh, that was actually a big, giant airbrush piece. This is before, you know, computers, so that was all hand airbrushed and everything. Um, and then, I don't know what else, and then just boring corporate stuff. I never, used to put that in my portfolio. Never put stuff in your portfolio that you do not want to actually do for a living. And I don't want to do any of that anymore. So I would never show that to anyone. So panning on the other side of the bed here, this uh, this is really cool. This is the Elgato uh, green screen. Let's see if I can pop this thing up. This is really cool. 
so I use this sometimes for backdrops, but this thing just pulls up and then it just collapses all back down to this cool little thing. So that's cool. And then of course, I've got more stuff here under the bed here. This is, under the bed is like my big storage thing. I don't know what, what's in here. Oh yeah, so these are all more shipping stuff. These are all my clear bags and everything for packing prints and things over here. Let's see, more paper, colored paper, you know, for doing mini comics or whatever. So that's all the stuff that's under there. So you've seen where I work, you've seen where I crash, but all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So we gotta have some fun, right? So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna show you probably, I, I think I've saved the best for last. I'm gonna show you the space station. We're gonna go down, let's check it out. All right, so behind this door is a space station. You're gonna see why we call it that in a minute, but this is the place where we take some time out just to have some fun. So uh, let's check it out. All right, here we go, right through this door. You're gonna have to watch your step. Uh, we're gonna step down in here. All right, hopefully the camera's picking this up. It's a little dimly lit in here, but we've got some surveillance, our surveillance unit up here. We have some storage containment units. Just press those open. We can store whatever we want in any of these three storage containment units. I will show you all that in a minute. Uh, we're gonna move over here. Say we wanna, you know, play some uh, skee ball. So here we go. So almost made it. Let me try one more. I'm not very good at this, obviously. There we go. All right. Then we're going to go in here into the space tunnel. All right. So as you can see, we've got a little tunnel here area. We can kind of go through here, hang out in here if we want. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to walk through this, but uh, all right. So this is the main area here, as you can see. So this is sort of, you saw the command center where we do all our design work. This is like the command center for where we wanna just hang out and, and chill and play games and whatever we want, power up. As you can see, we've got, we've got some LED lights going on. We can also change the color of the lights here. Say if we want to go, uh, if we wanna go green, we can go red go back to blue so let's go down here as you can see we've got some space aliens hanging up through these little portholes and nothing fancy uh, mostly old retro video game systems uh, right here I've got the Magnavox Odyssey 2 the only video game system that really matters and I don't know if you could see this the thing that I loved about this is the game system I had as a kid so Obviously, I am old school, but they had like the coolest video game art. And I don't know if you can see this, but that logo right there, that Odyssey logo, that's the logo that they took. If you've seen Stranger Things, if you're a fan of Stranger Things like me, they use that kind of base that logo for the arcade in Stranger Things season two. But uh, yeah, they always had awesome cartridge art and uh, just some other games over there. And we'll go through this. This is the other side of the space tunnel, as you can see. And you can see all the stars out through the windows. But we're not gonna walk through there. All right, so that's it. We've got, oh, over here, of course we've got the captain's chairs. If we wanna pilot this thing out of here. It usually stays stationary here in the underground lair. It takes a lot of energy to take this thing out into space. But, uh, but when we do, we've got some old school games to play. And yeah, it's just, it's cool to just hang out here, chill with the aliens. So that's about it. That's a tour of the underground lair from the main lab to the command center, the barracks, the space station, all that stuff. Other than the few, you know, restricted areas, top secret areas, which I can't really show you. Although, I don't know, maybe maybe if I did, I was thinking about maybe starting the Patreon and maybe showing some of that other stuff. But that sounds like something people would be interested in, let me know. But I think you got to see quite a bit of what I do here. Things I've never shown before in the past. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If there was anything that I went over too quickly or anything else you want to see more in depth, let me know. Like I talked about, I may show a little more of that mural, maybe some more of my art supplies. Uh, but if there's anything more you want to know, let me know. Maybe I'll do a video of it. Uh, but I got a lot to work to do, so I'm going to get back to that, and I'll see you guys later. That is all.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Cirkworks on social media. Do you like making comics? Then go to Cirkworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.